Alright, I just need to press the T button to spawn trees and... Oh my god, my computer is dying. Oh! Why is it so pretty? I wanna live here. Last year, I made an infinite open world survival game in Unity Engine for my final year university project. Pretty cool, eh? Well, what isn't cool is how long it actually took me to make. Countless hours researching, planning, testing, and throwing away code till I got what I wanted. But since the rise of ChatGPT, that may no longer be an issue anymore. As it turns out, this chatbot can write any code that you want in any language you want. All you have to do is tell it what you want its program, and voila! It works. So I spent my Christmas holiday trying to use it to remake my game. Just to see how far this thing can actually go. Maybe I could use it in my future projects, maybe people could use it for learning. And I also want to know if robots are going to take over the game development industry. Anyway, let me show you the game that we're going to be recreating today. Infinite landscapes. Underground caves. Picturesque beaches. Carrots that you can throw. A bespoke building system. Resource collection. As well as a juicy original soundtrack. The question today is can ChatGPT, a mere free to use online chatbot, compete against my blood, sweat, and tears? Well, let's find out. I usually like to start making a game with the map. So I'll just ask ChatGPT for a script that generates a 10x10 mesh of triangles, offsets every vertex's y value by a pseudo random value. It should give me a good hard terrain generator. And, uh, where is it? It's over there. Just like that, we have some magic dancing disco terrain. Why is it? I don't want disco terrain though, so let's make a splat map shader instead. A splat map shader will allow us to choose different textures for different heights of our terrain, which should make it look loads more realistic. We have to do a splat map because we don't have the texture coordinates, which are usually added in a modeling software like Blender or Maya. Uh, we're making this thing as we go, so we, uh, we don't have those. One thing we do have, however, is a wonderful, beautiful AI that is willing to program anything for us. We're friends, right? No. Yes, we are. Now make me a terrain shader. Make it snappy. Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Ow. Now to finish the game's landscape, I also asked the code slave to adjust its own code so the terrain spawns infinitely based on where the camera is, with a 10x10 10 10 grid, 100 of those squares of terrain. Oh, and so my computer doesn't die, I asked it to delete the old chunks that aren't near the player too. Now with all that and the shader I was talking about, it all works really, really well. Now this is starting to look like it actually has some potential. It's still not really a game, we need the player controller, so I'll just drop that into here and... This is an easy fix. See, all we have to do is GIVE ME WORKING CODE! Thank you. Oh my lord, look at that. We've done barely any work and we now have infinite land. Though it could definitely be a bit more exciting. We're definitely missing something here. We need to make a forest. Luckily for us, I recently bought an art pack from the Humble Bundle that's absolutely full of thick bushes and wood. We need to do that about 4,000 more times. To do that, I'm going to ask for a Unity C shell script that loops X amount of times, spawning a random object from a list by scanning downwards, checking for the ground, and spawning the object there if it finds the ground in that location, all within a set radius area. And we can do that all around the map. And with all that made, let's load it up. Alright, I just need to press the T button to spawn trees and... Oh my god, my computer is dying. Oh! Oh, that's more than I expected. Why is it so pretty? I wanna live here. Oh my god. Oh, it's so laggy though. Actually, it's not that bad considering there's so much. There's so much got spawned. <laughs> what happens if I? I'm gonna press it again. Hey, 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 hey! Stop right there, Bucko. We may have the code to spawn the forest, but no forest is complete without some nice ambient music. And I know just the guy. All right, put me some music.
Yeah, I bet. This is John, my brother. Right, guys, we're gonna be making some um, Minecraft. No, no, no. We're gonna be making some original music. Yeah, that's it. It's not to do with Minecraft at all. Nah, that's like, that's that's Kane's original game right there. And then at the end, it will go. So we spent an hour of our life pressing somewhat random keys and eventually came up with an idea that had some potential. So I took that idea and I threw it straight into Ableton to produce an actual track for the forest. So, with the world generation completed, the music score recorded, and the player controller fixed, all that's left is some weather, menus, building system and enemies. So I worked hard to implement them over the Christmas holiday. It was difficult to get the things I needed, like a user interface and a decent enemy AI, but with enough time and patience, I managed to piece together the last few bits. Anyway, so for the weather system, I've decided it would be best to have a list of Unity events that trigger when the weather changes, causing particles to fall out of the sky for rain, snow, clouds or leaves, and to change the lighting a bit to match. The code ChatGPT gave me is nice enough to make me doubt my capabilities as a programmer and want to jump out of a window. All we have to do now is make the particle effects for each type of weather, which is dead easy. You just get a particle system, add some gravity and more particles, and then you just tweak the values like colour, force, noise, etc to make it look like the effect you want. Finally, we just dropped the particles into the code we made earlier, and it looks pretty darn yummy wummy in my tummy. As for the building system, I don't think this will go smoothly, as a good building system relies on good controls, which are quite hard to get out of ChatGPT I've found so far. Nonetheless, you may as well call me Bob, because from now on, I'm building. But yeah, we can play some stuff by looking and clicking, and switch the item by pressing a number key. ChatGPT was not wanting to add any UI or decent controls to it. You'd be better off following a tutorial for this part, honestly. It was more work than it had to be. Anyway, the last addition is an enemy AI. Now we know that 3D printers can make 3D printers. Can an AI program an AI? Yeah, the answer is no. The AI program sucks ass. It just follows you a bit and lightly humps you occasionally, which is more attention than some of you viewers might be getting at this moment, so maybe that's good enough. But for me, I need a bit more to get me going. So I'm marking ChatGPT down some points on this one. I really did ask it a bunch of times to get a good AI, but it just would not get any better. So, with the last of our features completed, let's move on to seeing what people think. Is this game better, ChatGPT's game, or is my game better, the university project? Let's go! Let's get this over and done with. This is the one that was programmed by a robot. Obviously, I pieced it together. Art oh, style was really nice. So there's no UI, so you can't tell what you're facing, but if you press numbers, it changes the object. <laughs> what is this? Uh, you want to look at the robots yeah. version first. Press 2, and now, now do it. So every time you press a number, it will give you a different object to place. I didn't know you could climb. You wait, you climb up it? You need to press the number once and it switches. <laughs> <laughs> look at this, you got a whole base. So what's that, snow? Yeah. It's quite good, actually. I, what is this? I tried so hard to get a good water shade, it just... It, it can't do transparency for some reason. <laughs> Slurp juice bubble. What's it? Why is it like? Yeah, <laughs> the buildings are nice, but that's not really the robot, is it? No, it's that's just you adding it. Movement so nice. Is it? It generated all the movement on its own, which should, is interesting. You should have added, asked it to add slides in. Just... So, what do you think about the controls? Are they good or bad? Well, it's a bit laggy. It is a bit laggy, isn't it? Yeah. You got to sort out the jump. Is it too it's, high? Oh yeah. It's... You're right, it's way too high. <laughs> Made a penis! <laughs> a rock. Your game, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then left click oh, is to punch. Oh, that's that's cool. Oh, definitely. And then punch it. <laughs> like an inspect thing. Oh, I see. EQ? Yes, you yeah. can. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Oh, There's not that much wood. Oh, left click and then once you let go it places. 
Alright, I'm gonna build a little house. You need to make it so you can craft like actual blocks with this. Well, like a full wall and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't added crafting yet, but that'd be good. If you run up a slope and jump, you get boosted. So I just go everywhere like this. See? Oh, I see. <laughs> it was like you're skateboarding. Like the look of the water. Yeah. Wow. Art style's nice, the music's nice. I like the um, way you can place stuff where it stays. Running. Running's a bit scuffed. Oh, don't go in there. Oh, God. I forgot I added that. No, you're going to fall forever. All right, well, now you're in the caves. You jump all the way down. Yeah, is that lava? All right, so which one do you think is better? Your one. All right, so which one's better? That one. <laughs> Thanks for watching, especially if you made it this far. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got a lot of content in the works with no subscribers to show it to. So make sure you hit that sub button and comment down below to let me know. And also make sure to comment which game you preferred the look of, mine or ChatGPT's. All right, see you in the next video. Peace.